Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. As our society continues to experience a steep rise in COVID-19 cases, the university community has also not been spared. We have so far recorded 14 confirmed cases. We have also lost members of staff. These are not mere statistics. It is a difficult period for our country and the university community. I convey my condolences to the affected families and pray to the Almighty God to give them comfort and strength to overcome the pain and the loss. I also wish a quick recovery to all those who have tested positive. Those cases confirm that COVID-19 is real and is here within us. I urge all staff and students, therefore, to continue exercising caution by observing the guidelines issued by the government through the Ministry of Health from time to time. Statistics indicate that most of the infected persons are asymptomatic and mildly symptomatic, and the majority of them can be managed from home. Thus, I ask all staff and students to read the recently issued home-based isolation and care guidelines for patients with COVID-19 by the Ministry of Health. This will ensure that the health facilities are reserved for those who require critical care. In view of the current trends of infections and the need to ensure staff and students are safe, the university will continue to dispense its services using online platforms. The online teaching and learning, online admissions, online exams, and the virtual graduation will continue until such a time when we shall begin to see a decline in the number of cases or when the experts will advise that it is safe to resume on-campus learning. All our meetings will also continue to be conducted using online platforms we must remain vigilant. The academic division shall soon issue joining instructions and guidelines for conducting the online orientation for the class of 2020-2021. The continuing students will also commence the new academic year virtually in September. The Senate is going to deliberate and provide specific dates shortly. I urge parents guardians and sponsors to support the students with the smartphones, tablets, or computers to enable them to participate in our online classes in safety of their homes. Let me also reassure all students and staff that we are going to hold the 63rd graduation ceremony virtually on the 25th of September 2020. We plan to graduate all qualified graduates for PhDs, masters, bachelors, diplomas, and fellowships. Ladies and gentlemen, I recently shared a draft document on the University of Nairobi Students' Code of Conduct to solicit your views and comments. We have received very good comments and insightful contributions from stakeholders. I thank both staff and students who responded on or before the deadline, your comments and views have greatly improved the final document. The purpose for the Students' Code of Conduct is to promote good order at the university, to provide guidance and mentorship to students towards becoming responsible citizens, and guaranteeing an effective, expeditious, and impartial disciplinary procedures and processes. As I had promised last month, the university paid all salary arrears owed to staff in relation to the implementation of the CBA 2017-2021. We paid in accordance with the SRC guidelines. Unfortunately, University of Nairobi continues to experience a huge deficit in, it, in its payroll since the funding model of universities is not based on the collective bargaining agreement, but on the number of students admitted 
to the module one class. The so-called government sponsored students. For instance, in the 2019-2020, the salary, house allowance and pension combined amounted to 7.4 billion Kenya shillings. While the total capitation provided, including the amount to pay the enhanced salaries according to SRC guidelines and the collective bargaining agreement was 5.4 billion Kenya shillings. The result is a deficit of 2 billion Kenya shillings. This is a huge pay gap that requires to be addressed. There is need to ensure that no collective bargaining agreement will be signed without providing funding to support its implementation. It is apparent that this process has not been handled very well in the past. Ability to pay is a prerequisite to signing a collective bargaining agreement between parties. I am in the process of putting together relevant data that will help in making decisions to get out of this very bad situation. I therefore seek the understanding of all staff in this matter as we look for permanent solution. Colleagues, intellectual capital is an invariable tool or invariable asset. Professors continue constitute the intellectual wealth and the pool of wisdom of the university. There is therefore need to develop mechanisms of retaining those who retire. The University of Nairobi statutes provide for position of a meritorious professor to be conferred on merit to the professors who retire and meet the eligibility criteria. I am glad to inform you that the Senate has approved procedures and guidelines for the positions of emeritus professors. This will enable us to retain the services of productive professors beyond their retirement. Finally, our university have come of age. We are marking 50 years since the university became a fully fledged university and it became the first public university in Kenya on 1st July 1970. It is time to take stock of our contributions during the last 50 years. I will shortly put up a team to facilitate the Golden Jubilee celebrations. It is time to reflect on our strengths and weaknesses and to identify areas where we can make more impacts and continue being relevant to the society. There is need to celebrate our achievements, those who have contributed significantly to what we are this day. In his address during the inauguration of the University of Nairobi on, 100, on 10th December 1970, His Excellency President Jomo Kenyatta stated, and I quote, much has been said in the past about the role of the university as the custodian of truth. It may or may not be right to imply that a university has the monopoly, but I'm sure that there is other vital functions or contributions to the nobility of the human sense. Such a body must give full expression to the nobility of the human intellect. It must be in the forefront of inquiry and ambition on behalf of the surrounding society. It must undertake the testing and the translation of all new discoveries or theories of emotional experiences in a manner which encourages society to involve and keep pace with all changes in the party and the potential of human existence, end of quote. It is our time to reflect on what extent we have met this expectation of our father of the nation. We must go beyond issuing of degrees. Thank you all and may God bless you greatly. Have a great weekend.